Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Today I'm going to show you how I go about determining which AI model to use with Denoise AI when I'm reducing noise in an image. This is a selfie I took about five minutes ago of myself, and this is one of the images I'll be using in this video. Okay, you sharp-eyed viewers know this isn't really me. Uh, this is a picture I took of a white-faced sake at the Buffalo Zoo. We'll be using this image, and we'll also use this image I took of the Erie Basin Marina in Buffalo. So, how do you determine which AI model to use? Well, the way I go about doing it, what I'll do is I'll open up the picture of the white-faced sake in uh, Denoise AI. What I do is I start out with the four panel view. They call this comparison view. If you go up to the top right hand corner and click on view, you could see there's a number of different views. This is the view I start out with. This view allows me to see three of the four AI models at the same time. Of course, we're looking at four uh, panels. The first panel in the top left is the original image with no no, uh, noise reduction added to it at all. Now directly to the right, and this could vary depending on how you have these set up or clicked. Uh, next though is the standard AI model. And you'll notice that I have the settings set to auto. That's what I'll do is I'll start out with all four of the A model, AI models set to auto. And this is what I use to kind of narrow it down, determine which one is working better. Now, actually what I'll do before I even go through the models is I'll position the navigator over here in the top right hand corner to a position in the image that will allow me to see parts of the image that I definitely want to make sure that there's no noise. And that's the white Saki's face. But also there's a considerable considerable amount of noise on the background. So I'm going to put it like this so that I could see the background and see part of the white Saki's face. And then as I mentioned, I'll go through the different AI, AI models. We're going to see three at any one time. Um, the standard model in auto mode looks pretty good. Then next over here in the bottom left is the clear model. And again, you'll notice that's on auto. And that one actually looks pretty good. But with a direct comparison, uh, to, from, to that, to the standard model, the standard model on auto is better than the clear model on auto. So I have that. Next is low light. That's this lower right hand corner. And that one is better than clear, but not as good as standard, although it reduced the noise probably just as well as the standard model did. Um, I'm seeing on my computer, because I have my nose about a foot away from the screen, I could see more detail in the fur on the white Saki's face on the standard model compared to the low light model. So standard still wins there. Now we have one more model, this severe noise model. So what I'll do is I'll swap out one, since in this instance, so far standard is just the best. The other two aren't as good. I'll just swap it out with either of the other two. If I had two that were really close and one that was far off, I would swap it out with the one that was far off. Far, far off. Let's say uh, the low light model was the far off one. I'd make sure that's the active model. Then just click on severe noise over here and it will replace the low light model with that severe noise model. And actually that one looks um, pretty good, but uh, still with everything set to auto, the standard model works best. Uh, then what I'll do um, is I'll process off of this. Once I determine that the standard model is the better of the two, or, or better of the four actually, you know, actually uh, I'll go up to view and I'll go to single view so that I'm looking at the processed image. Now I have to make sure it updates. Look in the lower left-hand corner and make sure that it is updated. And I'm looking and it pretty much got rid of the noise. Now if I click and hold with the left mouse button, I'll see a before 
and I'll see an after. There's before and there's after. So just click on the image with the left mouse button and you'll see a before after. And now you could process off this. Um, this looks pretty good to me and I'd probably just use it exactly like this. But if I had a tiny bit of noise in spots, I would move the remove noise to the right. If I felt that I could maybe uh, eke out a little more sharpening, I would do that with this slider here. Now this post-processing down here, uh, these are sticky. So these are actually adjustments um, you know, that I've done on previous images. So they're kind of, when you open a new image, they'll be there. And this is usually the default settings I like to use. Recover original detail to 10 and color noise reduction to 25. So I usually just leave those just like that. One warning, recover original detail. If you keep moving that up a lot, you're going to start reintroducing noise. Um, maybe you could see that I started to reintroduce noise. So typically I don't like to move that too high. I would prefer to use enhanced sharpness if I need to kind of, you know, eke out a little bit more noise. So this one, this specific image actually was relatively easy in that um, I was able to determine which one of those four AI models worked best um, very easily. Let's do one that might be a little more difficult uh, to determine which of these AI models might work best. Now, again, I will go right to the comparison view. This is the four panel view, and I have to wait until everything updates. Again, I would move the navigator around to a point in the image till I feel it's you know representing a part of the image I want to make sure noise is removed. Now again with the standard setting uh, in auto it it doesn't look that great does it? It's got a lot of noise. Now over here in the clear setting uh, that one it might be a touch better than standard but not really it's it's maybe even worse in some areas In the darker areas it's worse. Now in the low light area of the three that we're viewing, that one definitely looks best. So that one is good. Now the next one to determine is that severe noise. Since I'm going to keep low light and I'm comparing everything to that, I'm just going to click on the standard model to make that active. Then go over to severe noise and click on that and it will replace the standard model with the severe noise model. And the severe noise model in many ways looks a lot better than the low light model. The low light model definitely has some blotchiness in it, but I see more detail in the actual lighthouse. On the severe noise model, the lighthouse is pretty smoothed over. Uh, now granted, we're zoomed in quite a bit and no one is probably going to notice in like that tiny detail on the lighthouse on the full image, but still I want to um, achieve the best noise reduction with the most uh, detail as possible. So what I'm going to do now, this one's a little more difficult. I need to I need to choose between the severe noise model and the low light model. So what I'm going to do is I am again going to go to the single view. Right now severe noise is active, so that's the one we'll see. So once it renders, um, there's the severe noise model again set on auto and the other one that looked decent was the low light model so I'll click on that let that render and once that renders I'll look at that and then now it doesn't take as long to render once it renders that first time so I could quickly click between low light and severe noise and it will render much quicker and Still, if I go back to low light, you could see, um, hopefully you could see it in the video. I'm not sure it's going to resolve through in the video. There seems to be some blotchiness in the uh, sky of the low light model. I don't like that. There also seems to be a little bit of noise in through here, although there is a lot more detail in the lighthouse itself. Uh, there's also some noise in this building over here. So let's go over to severe noise. Um, all that noise is cleaned up, but it definitely is smoother. Like it's kind of wiped out a lot of the detail. So what I would do now, since I'm going to leave these post-processing sliders alone, I don't want to move those, I'll move an enhanced sharpness up. And I'm going to move it up considerably, uh, probably out like around 75. Let it render. 
And once it renders, I'll see if that helped at all. Now it didn't reintroduce any noise and it marginally increased sharpness. So I'm gonna even whack it up even long, like, you know, bigger. So I'll bring it up even more. So again, it did kind of enhance the sharpness. It didn't reintroduce any noise. So what I'm gonna do now is still in severe noise. I'm gonna to go to the remove noise slider. I'm gonna tweak, take that down a little bit and see if that will help me regain any sharpness without reintroducing any noise. So I'm bringing it down to 30. I think it was on something around 47. And as I look at it, it looks actually pretty good. We're starting to see a little more detail, but it's still not like I want it. So I'll just come in and tweak that down to 20. So I was at like 30, I'll bring it down to 20. I'll try to dial it in. Um, all right, it's um, starting to get that blotchiness that we had in the other mode. So I guess I'll, I guess I'll move that back up, maybe 25. We'll split the difference, see what that looks like. And um, I still got that kind of blotchiness in there. Let's just pop it up to 30 again. Yeah, that's about good with enhanced sharpness all the way up, remove noise at 30. Now I could come in here and try to recover some original detail just to see if I'm not going to be reintroducing noise. I'll try it up to 20. That actually looks pretty good. Maybe I'm starting to get a little noise in here. So I'm being really fussy for the video. I probably wouldn't be this real, this fussy in real life. So I had it at 10. I moved it to 20. So let's try 15. 15 is about as good as I think I could get it. Let's jump back to that low light mode again. I mentioned that we had this blotchiness in here. I wasn't really happy with that. Um, but it seemed to have a touch more detail. It also has more noise in here. So what I'm going to do is I'll take remove noise up to like 75. Let it do its, let it do its thing. And yeah, we still have that blotchiness. I probably got rid of most of the noise. There's still some noise in this building over in here. So I, I'm really going to abandon low light. I don't think low light mode's going to work out. I just don't like this kind of blotchy sky. And the severe noise, the trade-off here is I don't have as much detail, period. Uh, so what I'll do is I'm going to apply this. And then we'll take a look at it once it's, um, you know, a full screen view of it. So I'll apply it. Let it do its thing going to save it and do all that and then what I'll do is now I'll look at it. it was a tiff file I started with the tiff files on purpose I could have used the raw files but I wanted to use the tiff files only because they um, process much faster they render much faster than the raw files do and since I'm doing the video I wanted them to render as fast as possible plus when I save it they save a lot faster as well so we'll open up this tiff file to full screen Okay, um, you know, when, once you see the entire image, um, I think you'll agree, it, it, all that detail that it was lacking, like in the lighthouse and in this, these buildings over here, really didn't matter. We do have good detail in the foreground area, these uh, rocks that are in the foreground, so, so that's good. So um, I think this worked out all right, using that severe noise AI, AI model and then... Um, then uh, processing off that. Now, one thing real quick, let's open up this original image I used um, very quickly into noise. I just wanna show you one more thing and then we're done. Um, these controls are sticky. Uh, as I mentioned, recover original detail. Remember I used, I had that originally at 10 and for this specific image or that other image, I moved it to 15 and now it stayed there. So remember that these are sticky. I took severe noise off auto and started moving sliders around so you're going to have to remember to come back in and reintroduce auto put these back to the default settings you like to use also in low light I move that off auto remember so it remembers that so remember to come in and change these settings as you want or as you need also the view will be um, cap two we had that single image view before so we're probably going to want to go back to comparison view uh, because that is the one i prefer to use and on this one here we mentioned that the standard model was good so i'll apply that so just remember those controls are what they call sticky uh, they stay the way you set them the last time you use the application which is good if you're doing a lot of similar images 
uh, you know, you easily could recall the settings you used on a similar image on another image. So if I had a lot of images of that white face sake or a lot of images of that uh, evening shot, actually that was an early morning shot. That was like at 4.30 in the morning, 5 in the morning. Uh, but either way, if I um, had a lot of it, similar images, I would probably use similar noise reduction, the same AI model and the same settings on those images. So it's nice to have those sticky settings, but just remember they're there so you could undo them when you do a totally different image. That's it. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <music>